Yo, what is up guys, it's Cruft here back with another video and today we're doing something very, very different than anything I've ever done on this channel and this actually might be something I start doing starting now. Um, this is going to be my first time doing this. This is not going to be edited that much. Um, I just kind of want to feel for it and I might do a lot of editing in the future if like these videos are really, you know, if you guys really like these videos, obviously, then I'm going to put more time into it. If you guys really don't like it, then I'm not going to put as much time into it. That's just how it is with anything that I do, like with my montage videos for Rocket League. Um, that I actually like really, really enjoy making. Um, my reaction videos, I mean, I like to keep those real on 100%, but this... These type of videos, I may have to do it like a decent amount of editing for to like show you guys some clips from the animes that I'm gonna be watching, or just give you guys a better like something more fun to watch, you know, than just me sitting here talking about it. But what we're gonna be talking about is this anime movie that I just finished watching right here, and that is No Game No Life Zero. And I'm just gonna leave this up for the whole fucking time that I'm talking about this. Um, I'm just gonna give you this is big spoilers. Um, I just finished watching it. This is actually aired. I think um, in 2017 uh, July 15th uh, 2017 um, I think it was uploaded on kiss anime like in 2018 or something and I just finished watching it I don't know why it took me so long to watch it, but it did and I've seen no game no life if you guys have seen no game no life I'm gonna give you a rundown of this this story and I'm gonna tell you what I thought about it and everything like that right so basically in this story uh it's an ancient disc board which is like long it's it's basically like a prequel to no game no life it kind of tells you the backstory to no game no life and why it's the way it is so basically the main character is this guy named riku and he is an angry young warrior i'm just basically reading this from my anime list just to keep it like simple and easy for you guys um he's a young warrior intent on saving humanity from the warring x seed the 16th sentient species Fighting to establish the one true God amongst the old Dios. I don't know how to say all these names, not gonna lie. In a lawless land, humanity lacks an, humanity's lack of magic and weak bodies have made for them to be easy targets from the other Exceed, leaving the humans on the brink of extinction. One day, however, hope returns to humanity when Riku finds a powerful female ex machina, which is gonna say ex machine, whom he names Shui, in an abandoned elf city. Exiled from her cluster because of her research into human emotions, Shui is convinced that humanity has only survived due to their power of these feelings and is determined to understand the, the human heart. Forming an unlikely partnership in the midst of an overwhelming chaos, Riku and Shui must now find the answers to their individual shortcomings in each other and discover for themselves what it truly means to be human as they fight for their lives together against all odds. Each with a powerful new ally in tow, it is up to them now to prevent the extinction of the human race and establish peace throughout this board. Now, this doesn't give you like a full little synopsis. I'm going to basically explain everything that happened. Um, I'm going to go into detail. I'm going to explain why I like it. And I'm going to give my rating. The rating on my anime list is an 8.52 out of 10. Um, it's really fucking good. Simple as that. One of the best anime movies I've ever seen in my life. It was made by Madhouse. Madhouse obviously makes fucking amazing animations you guys you guys know better than i do probably like i don't know a ton about like different um companies that create these shows but i know madhouse i do watch like my uh the anime man and stuff and he does reviews and everything and i watch him and i kind of you know this is all on a whim i'm basically just talking about this on the top of my head i literally just watched it yesterday and i was like yo i really want to make a fucking review on this i must try to start doing this i've been thinking about doing reviews for a while but yeah let's get back into it so Basically, the reason that the Exceed, like these 16 uh, sentient species, are fighting for this one true god is because there's this fucking thing. I forget what it's called, dude. It's literally like, um, it's like a final, like the most overpowered weapon in the world, right? And basically, it only reveals itself to the most powerful species, to the, to the strongest species or whatever. And so basically, what they're trying to do is kill off every species so there's only one left. So that, you know, like, they'll be the most powerful one because they're the only ones left. So then they'll have the most powerful weapon. They'll basically be, you know, top of the world. They'll basically be ruling over everything, you know. Like, obviously, that's how it's going to work. And so basically, the human species is the weakest one. So that's why they're the first target because they're the easiest to wipe out. And that's why everybody's trying to wipe them out first. Um, the main character basically finds this X machine called Shui. The machines are pretty, like, they're up there, but they're not, like, the highest level. 
Um, the highest are kind of like the elves. The elves are pretty high up there. Um, the Odias. Uh, there's this other one that's like super high. That's the most powerful one. And so basically, it's kind of like a romance slash. Um, I forget even what it's called. It's like fantasy and romance and stuff and like it has to do with like smarts. No, not really like sport. Um, but yeah, oh there it is, genre. Supernatural, drama, romance, fantasy, game. That's what it is, game right there. Um, so basically, um, in the very beginning, he you see him playing the uh, Riku as a kid playing a game of chess with Tet. And if you guys remember who Tet is, Tet is basically the god of like the world of no game in a life. He's the kid that's like the god, the ruler of everything and made everything basically played by games. And you know the ten rules in that world, you know, no killing, you, everything is one through bets and everything, all that stuff, right? Basically this all came about when Tet had witnessed um Riku basically like finesse the whole world. Basically Riku made those rules with his group of humans that had survived, and he basically um, saw the whole world as a game, like as a game of chess. And basically, what he did throughout the whole fucking series was he got he went to people, gave them false information or information that he did find out about other races, and basically manipulated every single race to become allies with certain races, to go against certain races and everything. And basically, what he wanted to do was what. Er what he found out was that if he blasted like the middle of this earth with like everybody's like power and everything, he would find the final the special weapon or whatever. I keep forgetting what it's called, but um, but yeah, he would have that special weapon. He'll basically end up saving all of humanity. He would basically be able to be like the ruler and everything, and basically like Shui is the most adorable little thing ever, bro. She is like this little machine, little lolly machine, right? And she ends up like learning how to have human emotion and she ends up falling in love with um Riku and it's the most adorable thing it literally like I don't know why I have headphones on but I do um but yeah so they end up like getting married or whatever right they end up getting married they end up becoming a couple and everything which is crazy um it was really really sweet to watch and my hair is a mess but yeah um it was really really nice to watch uh it really got, like, me and my feels, not gonna lie, because when she, like, started crying, it was like, I want to be with you forever, blah, 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 I was like, holy shit, it was kind of weird, though, because machines aren't supposed to cry, but whatever, um, and yeah, and so, basically, what he was doing was they were setting up these pods around, like, this little place where they were gonna blast, um, the final weapon, like, basically, what he was trying to do is get all these races to fire their weapons at the same spot, and he was gonna plant these things to, like, basically have it where when they all hit it it would multiply the fucking damage or whatever blah 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 all this other shit right and um what happened was he got really sick because he was trying to go out and do all these things and he was inhaling all this other shit that he wasn't supposed to be inhaling as a human and um basically he was like he, he took a rest one day he was like alright I'm gonna take one day off she was like you need to take a day off and she felt really bad and she went to go and finish planting those things where she needed and basically one of the elves detected her, like, energy or some shit. Because she wasn't supposed to go. It was usually just Riku. And if he did go with her, she wouldn't use any of her abilities. So she used her abilities to try to go fast so that she can finish them all. So she can be back with Riku and not, like, worry. And they ended up getting in a battle. And this elf chick, bro, just whooped Shui's ass, bro. And what Shui finally did, the, her last resort that she could figure out what to do was basically upload the information that she gathered about learning about the human heart like remember when i told you she got exiled from her cluster she ended up telling them about it and it was like yo i learned this blah blah blah. like i have feelings now and they're like all right you're worthy like we have to set like we have to get this connection and once we do you'll be fine you can't take any damage while you're uploading this so she's basically uploading all her knowledge and everything that she had to them and uh she finally ended up actually dying to from this elf chick and um what that had caused, though, was for the machine race to jo join forces with the humans. And because of that, they finally, uh, they finally became, like, how do I say it? Like, they became allies, and the machines helped Riku. And so Riku basically, you know, used their abilities. Their abil One of their abilities was to be able to, like, copy somebody's attack and then 
redirect it and use it themselves. And so basically he got all of them to like finally do their use their final attacks and everything. The whole mecha race like stood there and like absorbed the attack and then shot it back on the earth. And he basically got the final weapon. He got the, the, the mass weapon. I forget what it's called again. Like Jesus Christ. But like the Holy Grail or whatever, right? He got the Holy Grail um, of the whole entire place. And uh, he goes to reach out with it with his one arm that he had because he only had one arm. And it just fucking disintegrates. And all you see is he, like he just starts praying. He was like, like, I know there's a, like, I never prayed before, but like, please help me. Like, I just want, I just, I just want no one to die. Like, I want to be, like, I want to cause as little death as possible. I know there's a lot of blood on my hands after this, though, but I just wanted to end the war. I wanted to end the fighting, please. Blah, blah, blah. He was like begging. And then what happened was you just see a little fucking kid floating over him. And in the beginning, when you see him playing chess with Tet, you don't see Tet. You just see, you just see like a little black blur, a little outline. But you could tell it's Tet the hat, you know what I'm saying? So like you knew it was Tet. And so all you see is this little kid just floating up to the little, the Holy Grail thing and just cup it in his hand and he turns around and, he, and, and there he is. It's fucking Tet, dude. Literally just Tet, just finesses it. And it was like, hey. And then basically what happened was he, um, he basically caused the world to be like all, basically he created the world right then and there with that thing um, for No Game No Life at the end of No Game No Life Zero. Um, the whole point is the zero was because there's zero, pro like, there's never zero probability in anything. So, like, when they said the humans had 0% chance of their thing working, he was like, no, there's never a 0% chance because of all these the different outliers. You can never know what could happen. And so that was, like, the key thing was, like, oh, there's never zero, like, percent. Like, it, you always have a chance to do whatever you're doing. It was, like, a little, you know, the stuff that they have in anime where it shows, like, it tries to give out a message to the the viewers, you know, not to give up or whatever, stuff like that. Um, but yeah, this, this, this movie was fired and like, it really made me cry when like she ended up dying and like he found out and he just like lost it. And like, it was, it was really, really good. And like having Tet tie into it all and him actually, like the whole, the whole movie was basically Tet telling a story to one of the girls. And then, um, like, uh, what's his face? Riku had a sister and then, you know, Shui and Riku got married and they all engraved their names on this little stone. And in the end, you see that, that dumb big boob chick with the fucking... I don't know what I'm talking about. The dumb girl that ended up joining uh, Sora and Shino on their adventure. Um, she had the necklace and it had the names on the back of it. And it was their names. And I was like, holy shit. Like, this is so crazy. And it was just a good, good tie-in to everything. Um, the only thing that sucks is we still don't have a second season of No Game No Life. I have no idea if they're... Actually, I don't even have an idea if there is a second season because I haven't even looked, but I'm pretty sure there's not. And, um, I don't know. I give this, like, a solid 9.5 out of 10, dude. Like, it was so good. Literally, like, if the only other thing that I could have said about it is if they were to, like, instead of making a movie, making it, like, a whole, ep like, series and then kind of go into depth about each of the other species, kind of giving a background about them, like, explaining, like, why it is the way it is and everything, kind of going into it. But it was just, like, a quick little movie just talking about the origin story of No Game No Life and why everything is the way it was. And I thought it was fucking amazing. It was so good. It literally was like, I recommend you guys watching it if you guys haven't watched it and you're still sitting here listening to all the spoilers. But yeah, I definitely am going to like try to do more uh, YouTube videos like this. Uh, they're probably, I'm probably going to put a lot more time into like them as I'm learning how to you know make these. Because this is my first time making a review like this. I'm probably going to start, you know, editing and adding more photos up while I'm talking about it in different, like, videos of me showing you guys what I mean and everything starting from the next one forward. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you guys definitely enjoyed. Definitely check out No Game No Life Zero. Comment down below what other animes you want me to review. Um, I might do a review on that new basketball anime because that shit's fire. I might make an AMV on that. I need to start making AMVs too, because I love making AMVs, dude. Like, AMVs are my shit. But, um, yeah, that's going to be it for, for this video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy. And I will catch you guys in the next video. So, until then, peace.